What's up, guys? Jason Payne, your host of the Sexy Business Status Podcast. I'm here with one of my good friends, uh, my trainer, and a freaking savage in the health and wellness industry, Mr. Terrence. Terrence, what's your last name? Johnson. Johnson. I don't even know his last name. (laughs) I just have TI. You know, it's one of those ones that you could just over, you know, it's just a quick oversight at the end of the day. Yeah, there you go. That's funny. So, um, by the way, we need to talk about, we'll get into advertising and marketing and, and referrals and all that stuff of how I went from not knowing you to knowing you to talking to you to now training with you. Right. So we'll get, we'll get into that, but I want to make sure that everybody knows that <clears throat> the, the power, there's me two or three good nuggets that we're going to go over here in the next 30 minutes. And, they are that you can do things really well, but you could do them better with help Absolutely. with, with professional help. So obviously we're gonna talk about the health and fitness space here. So we got my boy, Terrence Johnson here. Uh, I was just at his gym right here on Boveston, Elliot and Gilbert in Arizona. Um, uh, 6 a.m. this morning. That's right. You were there bright and early. Right. And we did legs today. And so we did, we did hit those legs. Nice. I'll be I'll be waddling like a duck um <laughs> tomorrow. But a good looking duck. A good looking duck. Yeah. A, a ripped ripped looking duck. So just just to give you guys some background, with Terrence. So uh, my buddy Mike Jensen, uh, Cam Bodden from Green Mango, those that know uh, know Cam, and a couple others uh, work out with Terrence at a studio, right? And I, I, I've known Mike. He actually shares a, a space here at our construction yard with us. And um, uh, obviously, I've known Cam. Cam shredded and like, dude, where do you where do you go work out, right? And that's where people people that are very fit they get compliments and then questions like, where do you work out? Who do you work out with? What are you taking? What are you not taking? Type deal. And that was the conversation starter. And so the power of being able to refer somebody to like with their health and their the most important thing is their body. Cause if they don't have a body functioning, like everything else doesn't, doesn't matter. It just doesn't. Right. And so how important is it to make sure that your, your health and your fitness is dialed in and then, you know, create basically creating results with your clients to where they want to refer you. Because if you're not changing, right, then you're probably not going to get any referrals. No, um, no facts, facts. I mean, it's one of those things that people just, they take it for granted. They don't realize that you can't do anything without your health. You're just limited to your health. So all of a sudden it's a, the task of getting out of your bed and walking to the car becomes 20 times harder than it had to be. And it's one of those things where it's sad because that is a lot of people's reality is they, they're not able to move the way that they want to. But once you, once you have your health, dude, everything is easy. Everything becomes so much of a realistic view that you can go ahead and achieve whatever, because you've done the hard thing. And now it's, well, I've done harder. I've done easier. Well, one of one of my favorite quotes ever. You're talking like Elon Musk, multiple billions of dollars. You're talking Steve Jobs. Um, you know all these all these big wigs, the Kardashians. You know, uh, you, you name it. You cannot outsource push-ups. No Thanks. matter no matter how much money you have, right? Now you can take all the pills and get the IVs and all that crap too. That's that's sort of get the shots, do whatever. But like. Someone that is legitimately in great physical condition, they had to do that themselves. You cannot outsource, which is the exact opposite of what I teach in business, right? And my skill right. mastermind is you want to outsource all that stuff, right? You want to hire and delegate, hire and delegate, hire and delegate. But the one thing that you cannot and should never do is you can even, you can even hire and delegate your nutrition. You can get, you know, meal prep. You can get, you know, uh, certain things. But like that, the physicality of going to the gym, getting that dopamine hit, getting that workout in, and and really getting in the best condition and shape of your life, you cannot outsource that. No, absolutely, you can't. It's one of those things that, and I and I love the fact that you brought up pushes because it's one of the ones that it's a universal exercise. Everybody doesn't matter what language you speak, you get down, everybody goes push-ups. Period. They're not going to call it anything else other than push-ups. Right. And you're going to get measured by how many you can or cannot do. I mean, you're just going to get called out by somebody where you can be the biggest, baddest looking person, but if you cannot do a pushup, you're getting talked about. And depending on that circle, there'll be, it'll either be a very encouraging talking about or it'll be a very big shaming talking about you. Right. Right. That's nuts. So that being said, um, I have lost 7% body fat in less than 30 days with you. Now, 
I'll go back to some history. I've only lost like, I've actually lost eight pounds. No, not five. Yeah. So I've lost eight pounds, but I've lost seven, almost 8% of body fat, which is obviously, in my opinion, way more uh, bigger of a metric than the actual pounds, right? Right. So that, be- that being said, the... I want you guys to give you guys some context. Those that are listening, right? Small business owners, moms, dads, um, uh, entrepreneurs. I want you guys to understand that like you can be ripped and have a family. You can be ripped and have a successful business. You can be ripped and still work your ass off in your business. And you and you have a great relationship with your kids and eat uh, and eat food. Like you don't have to freaking be a rabbit and just eat salad all day, right? Yeah, that's terrible. But like that's the, the thing that, the biggest thing for me, because I've been going to EOS, EOS is like five minutes from my house. I've been going there and I've been working out 75 hard or not. I work out every, I've been working out every single day for at least a year, maybe in a year and a half, but I still have this little fluff around me that I haven't been able to kick. And I, I literally pissing me off to where I literally was asking Cam and some others. I'm like, Hey dude, like who, where do you go? Who is he? You know, good, bad otherwise. And they're like, dude, go to Terrence. I'm like, okay, let's do it. And literally just in a matter of 30 days with you compared to 18 months by myself, the power of getting with a professional in their space has literally changed my life. I'm getting compliments that I was never getting before. They're like, dude, like you're looking good. You're looking jacked. You're looking, I'm not where I want to be. I'm not, you know, but the progress is there. Whereas I felt like it was almost, I was just maintaining at EOS by myself. What is, to me, that's very powerful, by the way, on, on a personal level. But why is it so important to make sure you don't just go going to the gym is good, right? You can do no, nothing. Absolutely. You can eat, eat Twinkies and eat Dorito chips and sit down and watch, you know, eight hours of basketball or whatever, and just dink around and, and get fat and lazy and out of shape. Or you can do what I did. And I went to the gym and I maintained, nobody ever thought I was fat ever right. from that. But like, I know there's that next level that I can and should be at that I want to be at. And so, but why is it so much more important to get that accountability. That's the word I'm looking for. Get that accountability to take your fitness and your health to the next level. Right. So glad you asked that question. And I'll sum it up real easy, real simple. There are lots of people that go to the gym. They're disciplined. They're dedicated. They go to the gym. But the biggest difference is they just go. There's Mm -hmm. no plan. They just go, oh, you know what? Today I feel like X. Or I'm going to do this. Oh, you know what? And, And there's a sense of accomplishment. And I'm not going to take that away from anybody. If you go to the gym, Hey, hats off to you check Mark. But then it becomes a, just because you have a plan doesn't mean it's the best plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the accountability that we provide, that's where the plan comes into play because you told me what you wanted, told me what you needed to do, told me what you had been doing. And that 18 months that you put in work, it shows because the waste that we've been doing and the numbers we've been able to hit your body was ready for it. It just needed to be shown a different way of what it needed to take everything you've been doing and the foundation you created and just to fine tune just a few different components. So the accountability comes down to that specific thing, Jay. It's simply we're going to make sure that we fine tune what you're doing, not waste time. Because people will go to the gym and be like, oh, dude, I was there for two hours. I promise you, no one's coming into my gym and doing my workout for two hours. You're not going to survive. It's not going to Dude, work. yours is an hour. I like can do 45 minutes because I leave to go get my kids. 45 minutes and I'm gassed. Like I'm out. It's funny that you say that because um, when it when it comes to the, the accountability part, like I was still waking up every day. I was still showing up every day. But you're right. Some of those workouts were half-assed. And being in that environment where there's account, you go into EOS, there's no accountability there. You could go there. And I've been there. I've, we've all done this before. You see a high school friend or something. Go, I go to church around that area. Yep. Dude, they're like, Jason, what's up, man? Freaking 30 minutes later, I haven't broken a sweat. I haven't moved my feet. My heart rate is like freaking five. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? I haven't done anything, but I was at the gym for 30 minutes. And I'm like, dude, now I got to go or I got to hustle and try and squeeze a, you know, a 30 or 45 minute workout into 10 minutes because I have to leave. And it's like, mm-hmm. dude, I was like, that's why I almost honestly don't like going to those bigger gyms because I know people over there, especially like I'm, I'm born and raised there. I've lived in that area for a decade, right? And so I'm like, I need to go somewhere. But we have buddies at your at your space, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. But there's like, we can talk, but still freaking get your reps in and get your sets in. Absolutely. And so it's crazy how having that accountability, and we'll go into, I taught this from stage. I think you saw this this clip. But one of the biggest things is I, I, I have been doing dumbbell press with 50s at US by myself, right? 
And I, I don't work out with anybody else. I don't have like a gym partner. It's literally just me. I go by myself. Right. It's my, almost like my meditation piece. Right. Um, and so I go and I'm at fifties, but then I go start working out with you. And there were 65s on the ground and we're doing dumbbell press and there were 65s on the ground. And I was like, dude, that's 15, that's 30 pounds total more than what I've been used to doing by Absolutely. myself at EO. So this is the power of, and this goes for anything guys, marriage, get a professional. I was literally at therapy. I go to therapy every Monday from 10 to 11. You can never get a hold of me ever whatsoever. Every Monday, 10 to 11, I work on myself and I work on my marriage every freaking week. Some people do that when it's like crisis mode. I do it like I'll do it for the rest of my life. Oh, absolutely. Like, so marriage. And then like, what about your finances? Do you have a, a financial, a CFO or a financial savvy person that can help you make sure that you're putting your money in the right places? Then you have your health and your fitness, right? Because you can do all of those things okay by yourself. But unless you're a professional and not an amateur at those things, I don't think you're going to get the results that you truly, truly want unless you get that professional help. Right. And that's, and that's the, and that's the mistake that everybody makes. Everybody goes, well, you know, like, like, you know, right now everybody's finishing up taxes. Right. And it's like, oh, let me do TurboTax. Well, why? Why would you do TurboTax? Turbo tax. TurboTax is going to give you some simple basic things and, or, you know what, I'm going to do my taxes myself. Well, if you didn't decide to become a professional in taxes, could I do some basic taxes? Absolutely. Sure. Do I want to? YouTube, no. man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get a professional. You know what I mean? And people just kind of, Jason, people kind of start getting out of the different space of, well, you could do some dentistry, but you're not doing that. I mean, so there's certain things where people go, that's right. part of the norm of professionalism is a dentist, a doctor. But then after that, they start going, well, you know what? Um, I'm going to go ahead and do my own lawn. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, I'll do my taxes myself. You know, I'll go ahead and do my own pest control. Oh, you know what? There's a little thing on my roof. Oh, you know what? I'll fix it myself. Totally. The hell with that. No, no, no. I'm not designed to be on a roof. I'm not going to get on the roof. There's somebody who's professional with that. So there's a certain point where you get, you get to a certain point where it goes, okay, what is it that you want? You're getting further away from what you want and, and you need to get closer to what you want, which means get the people that you need who can go ahead and get you what you want. And it just, you know, and it all works its way out mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, it's time. Well, that it's time. And I also think that a lot of those people that try and do, you know, the, the roof by themselves or the, or those certain things, I feel like not to be a, a dick, but just being very transparent, I feel like they're not a professional in their own space. So they don't appreciate or value the professionalism that comes with a trainer or with a dentist or with a roofer. They think that, you know, I can YouTube and go to Home Depot or whatever, and they can, and they can make it happen. Or just like taxes, like, oh, it's turbo tax. Like it's literally that easy and it's 50 bucks and you do it and you hop on and answer these questions and you're done. Mm -hmm. But then you go to a professional and you make the exact same amount of money, but then you get a professional a CPA in there versus a turbo tax type of approach, right. just like your health, just like your marriage, just like your finances, just like your business, right? You start a business. Cool. Could you survive? I'm sure some people just have the natural grit to not quit. They'll be in business. They might be miserable and they might not make any money but they're still in business or they hire someone like myself that has an eight figure business doing, you know, $1.5 million a month in revenue that can show you exactly what to do and how to do it. Or you can just try and wing it yourself. Right. But that's the amateur approach, not the professional approach. Absolutely. So by the way, I'm going to say this on the podcast, just so it's public. Nice. I want to advertise on your jumbotron screen thingy. Okay. Somebody said like, Hey, I want to do that. I'm like, dude, it's, I think it's only you. And then they're like advertising for it. I'm like, dude, I need to freaking be on that crap. Like have that thing turning, dude. It's like, I was, I drove by yesterday or yep. maybe it was this morning. I was like, dude, I need to advertise on that thing. Let's go. Okay. So how do so wh what's your biggest source of clients? How do you, how do you get the most clients? What is, first of all, how long you've been in, how long you've been in the gym space and in, in the health and fitness space? So I've been in the health space since 2000. Since 2000. Okay. So 24 years. Yeah. Whew. Wow. <laughs> Either you're old or you started when you were 14. You know, I'm, I'm definitely old. I'm definitely, <laughs> definitely, old. definitely didn't start when I was 14, but definitely on that age scale for sure. That's awesome. So, so two, two and a half decades almost of being in the health and fitness space. How long have you been in your, in your building right there on Velvet Sonoya? You know, we've been in that building now. Oh gosh. Was this, this is 24. It's mm -hmm. almost been eight years. Eight years. Okay. So 16 ish. Yeah. Okay. So eight years. And what is, uh, how do you get people to come into your gym and stay at your gym to where they want to refer you out? And, and what, what does that look like as, because 
I'm in the blue collar space, completely different than the health space. Right. I mean, like light years difference from, I mean, there's some, some commonalities in just general business, but like you and I, the way we attract people and bring people in and, and transact with them, your average ticket versus my average ticket, like retention, like right. a lot of my roots are one and done. Yours, like you bank on the monthlies, all those things. What do you do to attract clients? You've been successful for the past eight years to have a, a thriving gym. I know you're out, you're almost grown out of it right now. You're, you know, hopefully going to get out of there and get in a bigger space. What, what would you contribute that to? Those are listening, right? You're talking to small right. business owners right. that, by the way, you beat the, the stat, by the way, the average business owner uh, goes out of business in three years. Fantastic. Does less, less than $2 million in revenue and goes out of business in three years. Oh, fantastic. So yeah. So this, this December will be 15 years in total for us. And, awesome. and the part I'll tell you is the biggest thing is I'm just real. Jason, I, I keep it real. And when I say that, meaning when people come to us, I'll tell them, you're not going to be with me forever. This is not mm. a forever thing. I'm here to get you better. I'm here to get you your goals. And at the same time, I'm also here to help you learn. Because it's going to come a certain point where you need to be able to do this, not just in my space, but you need to be able to do it when you're out of town. Right. You need to be able to do it when you're around other people. Have the courage and confidence to turn around and tell someone, hey, you know what? My trainer went ahead and showed me a different way on how to do that movement. And then eventually you get to a space where you're like, okay, because at some point you're going to teach your kids. There's going to be right. some part where your kids are like, dad, I'm ready to get after. And you're like, okay, I need you to have that confidence that you know what to do. You know how to show it to them. You know, yeah. Is it the same thing as far as you being able to program? Not necessarily. It doesn't have to be that, but you do need to be able to show them the correct form of technique. So when people come to the door, we'll map out what it's going to take. And once we mapped out what it takes, then we go, Hey, once you get there, then you'll have a decision on now what's next and we'll keep going. And then eventually we'll get to a point where, you know what, we may not have any more goals. And at that point, we either pardon ways or we're figuring out something else. Mm. It's one of the two. So the biggest way I've always gotten people is the results and my honesty. You know, I've worked in the corporate space. That's what got me started doing my thing was, you know, like the E-Myth book where, yeah, just one day you get pissed off. Totally. Got tired of the, you know, got tired of people telling me no, 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 no. Yep. Then it became a talk to my wife. My wife said, well, hell, you should just do it yourself. Done. Bing. Purchase, That's purchase, cool. purchase. I'm out of here. And then poof. Doesn't always work like that. I mean, as you know, there's there's definitely a lot of there's a lot of hours. I mean, I definitely could say that had I had some mentoring on how to run a business, it wouldn't have taken me to where I am now. I would have been where I am a lot faster, a lot sooner, instead of going through all the hardships and heartaches and the figure this out, figure that out. And loss and lost a lot less of money. Yes. There's <laughs> been a lot of wasted money. Lots of wasted money. So, so I'm I'm glad that you bring that up. Like the the hours that you just have to basically say, okay, I'm I'm over this, and I just want to jump ship and just and just go for it, right? Yeah. What do you do when you start a business? What do you What did you do, and what are you still doing to attract clients into your gym? Big how do you How do you get them? Like, hey, we want to you know we want to hit this number of clients per month and on these certain programs and whatnot. What does that look like for you guys? The biggest one is you got to be aware. Like people need to actually know you exist. That's mm. probably the biggest thing. I mean, there was so many times where I sat there and thought, okay, I'll go ahead. Like the last one I did, and I'll remember this. And to this day, that's why even my last ad with it was funny. And I'll tell you about it. It was the fries ad. You know, the thing on the coupon on the back. Mm -hmm. I sat there, was like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, all right, yeah, you know, it'll be some. You know, be, you know, because we get the push and the pull type marketing. So I was like, okay, you know what? There's some people that shop at Fry's. Maybe I'll get one. You know what I mean? Let me just try to get one or two. Did it for a year. I got zero. For a year. I did it for a year. Got zero. Got zero. Got nothing out of it. Absolutely nothing. And, and ballpark, what did that cost to invest? And ballpark, that cost me five grand. So five grand. So $5,000 investment, 12 months, zero. Yep. And, and no return. Now, before he keeps going, I want you guys to pay attention. One, he didn't spend... 50 bucks or 500 bucks. He spent five grand. I think when people, they don't invest enough money. Um, one of my favorite quotes I heard from uh, Grant Cardone actually was people that spend more money pay more attention. Absolutely. People that pay less money pay less attention. Now I'm not going to tell you what I pay Terrence per month, but it's a little bit more than EOS per month. Right. Oh, absolutely. So, so think of like the 30, 20, 30, 50 bucks a month you're paying to these big gyms. Right. Like you're not paying a lot, so you're going to pay less attention naturally. You just are. 
Now, what I'm in, what to, it's funny is with them, I'm just like, oh, it's 20, 30, 50 bucks a month, whatever. But with you, like, to, I literally use the word investment. Like, this is my health investment with you on a monthly basis because of how much it is. Right. And it's not the dollar amount, but like, I will show up because I am invested in what I'm in what I'm doing. Um, because I, I want to see it happen. So number one, the, the dollar amount, right? So five grand, the other part that a lot of most people, especially in 2024, we want everything right now. We have this freaking, these damn phones at our fingertips yeah. technology. Like we blink and all of a sudden the ads show up in our freaking brains and you know, um, 12 months, a lot of people get, do one post or they, you know, they give a 30 or 60 or 90 day trial at best. This thing sucks. It's a piece of shit. It doesn't work. Like I'm out. I'm over it. Like he we did it for 12 months and still got nothing. And those are two biggest things. So pay attention to the 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 true dollar amount that you're investing into something and how long, right? It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's just not. But you also need to invest, not just like pull whatever you have in your wallet. Like you need to, you know, pull out your credit card with a big limit on it and freaking invest and throw down. Right. So didn't work. Then what happened? Yeah, it didn't work. So then the biggest thing, like you said, I learned, I learned that number one, I never had any control. Mm. I never had any control. It was on the back of a receipt. And then I sat there and asked myself, when was the last time I looked at the back of my receipt? Hell, a matter of fact, do I even shop at fries? <laughs> and then I sat there and was like, holy hell, I don't <laughs> even shop at fries. And then I sat there and I asked my other clients, I'm like, do you shop at fries? They were like, Dude, I do Amazon. I do this. I do that. Yeah. Nobody shops at fries. They just go ahead, Instacart, everything like that. That's so, so funny. So after that, I learned, okay, you know what? I didn't even bother to think this all the way through. I just sat there and was like, oh, okay, yeah, this makes sense. So the last ad I did, which was the way that just kind of helped me get out of this, was I put on their picture of me, and then I said, voted number one by your mom. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Picture of a picture of you. Picture right? of me. Rip chiseled and voted number one by, by your, your mom. mom. Yep. That is fr- <laughs> that is um that is a that is such an attention getter. I love it. And how did it do? And it did nothing. Oh, but did nothing. I got nothing. But the biggest thing I got from it was a reminder. Was number one, I wasn't being me. By putting it on those ads, I was just kind of putting stuff that they suggested or they said, hey, you know, people have done this, people have done that. Well, my business isn't like anybody else's business. So mm-hmm. when they, I listen to these suggestions, I'm like, these suckers don't even train in my place. They don't even know what the hell my business is. They just know it's fitness and that's all they know. And they think it's the same as any time fitness. I'm, right. I'm nothing like that. So I learned from those two things. And then from there, it just changed my perspective. I'm like, you know what, number one. I should have asked the people who come to me because sometimes, you know, me, believe it or not, sometimes your customers, they'll tell you exactly what you could be doing. You should be doing. They'll give you an idea that you may not even thought of. That was number one. And then number two, I realized, okay, let me get back in control Mm. because we were already doing the results. And the issue for us was people just don't know we exist. So I needed to make sure they knew we exist. Yeah. So because people didn't know we existed, I said, well, how do I make sure people know we exist? Well, that's easy. I can go ahead and take that same money and I can go ahead and give it back to every client that walks in the door easily by none. And so from there, I said, hell, I'm going to just go ahead and buy shirts. I'm going to buy all kind of apparel and I'm just going to make sure that everybody in the gym has one constantly. Oh, you know what? I'll change the color. Boom. Give it to them. Give it to them. Because at the love end it. of the day, freaking love it. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, right. And, and I'd ask this to you too. When was the last time you got something that you, at least like you said, clothing, clothing is an easy one where you sure. sat there and got it and you were like, okay, sweet. I'm throwing this way. Dude, I have hundreds of free shirts that are folded up sitting in my closet Yeah, that, that I should throw yeah. it. They're either, either I've never worn them or they're not the right size, but they're just like there. Cause they're just there. Right. Yeah. And so because I've learned that people have a lot of emotional connection, like you said, once you came on board, you're like, okay, you know, I'm making an investment. Well, it just reminds you of the investment. You know, it's no different than, you know, it's a better business card. I'll throw away business cards all day. All day. It means nothing to me. Somebody gives me a hat, a shirt, a bracelet, dude, I'll wear that. And then when somebody asks me, they'll be like, hey, do you work for so-and-so? Uh, no, but dude, let me tell you about it, man. 
awesome business, man. I've had nothing but great, blah, blah, blah. It just starts conversations. So right. even if we were in a different space and you didn't know me, but I was wearing a state 48 roofing shirt, you'd be like, dude, is that your company? No, but it's my boy Jason's, man. Dude, they do a great job. They'll literally come and inspect it. Matter of fact, I had this one company come by and I didn't even know it was an issue till they came and checked it out. Dude, save me 15 grand. It cost me four grand for them to repair it, but it saved me 15. Dude, that's literally 11 grand back to my pocket that doesn't come out all of a sudden what I least expected. And then people go, oh, right. dude, give me a contact. Boom, easy, done. done. That's that's huge. So I love I love the apparel thing. And if you pay attention... Uh, whenever I go work out, I always wear. Now I am. I will willingly support people that I coach with, um, or that I'm supporting, like a friend, right, or a brand that has helped me become a better husband, father, or business owner. Facts. For example, uh, this morning I was wearing an Andy Elliott, Elliott Army shirt. Right. Yep. Andy Elliott has helped me a lot with my marriage, a lot with my mindset, a lot with my fitness. Um, and so I'll wear the shirt, but I always wore my scale or my state 48 hat. Uh, I wore your, this exact same shirt that you have on right now, cut out the sleeves, right? I wore yeah. it on a Thursday last week, but I wear either a scale hat or a state 48 hat. So I'm always, if I, if I'm even golfing, like, because people that the difference, I love these say about that because like omnipresent, like pass out your stuff. You want people to wear your stuff over and over and over. Cause at the end of the day, it becomes a social status too. So when like, if you were getting me results, I have your shirt. It would stay in my closet right? just with the other dozens and dozens of other free ones. Right. right. But like I have a quarter mania shirt that I just ripped off and, and cut off and I wear it for working out. It's a quarter mania shirt for the Preston Lord uh, fundraiser that we did. Right. I think they raised, they said they raised like 25,000 bucks. Like Incredible. they just killed it. And we put it, we played a huge, huge part in that. We just replaced his roof or his parents roof. Um, and, but like that shirt, like I'll have that shirt forever. Why? Cause there's an emotional attachment Absolutely. to that shirt, to that hat, to that bracelet, that backpack, that book, that whatever. So that being said, it's smart that you do that because you can't, you have to wear a shirt. Absolutely. And, and ball and ugly people that have really bad hairlines. Like I do that. You got to wear a hat, right? Like, I mean, like think about this, Jason, right? Like, you know, I know I was in, you were in high school closer than me a long time ago, but yet you could talk to people that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s. They still got stuff from high school. Oh, yeah. Even though they're never going to wear it again. Yeah. I'm a victim of that. I got my Letterman jacket. It sits in my closet. They, oh, yeah. I'm never going to wear it again, but nope. it's there. Yep. Because like you said, there's an attachment to it, and, and there's a good attachment. Right. So that's why I started going. I'm like, okay, well, wait a minute. If I'm going to spend that kind of money on marketing and have no control of it, well, why don't I go ahead and do what I do have control of it, which is getting our customers the results they want, and then in return saying, hey, here you go. Thank you. We're glad you're here. Want to go ahead and say thank you. And we can say thank you, you know, in so many ways, but this is one way that I know specifically you can understand that we are appreciative that you have chosen us because you, everybody has choices. Love it. So, yeah. Why not? So ju just like uh shameless plug to uh, Andy Frisella first form, right? Yep. I, I think this morning I wore a first form shirt. Why uh, do I know Andy Frisella personally? No, I've met him before. Um, but dude, like I'm on 75 hard right now. I'm on day 40. I don't know, 40 something. Let's see. What day am I on? 40. Definitely know you in the 40s. Yeah. 40, 43. Right. But like that 75 hard program has, has changed my mindset. It's changed my, uh, it's helped my jumpstart my wife on her journey after having four kids in eight years, right. Getting her, yeah. she, she's ripped and working out every single day now. And a lot of that stuff from Andy, his podcasts are absolutely insane. Um, and everything, everything about that, what he does. And so I support that brand and it's a conversation starter. It just, it just is Absolutely. if they know who it is. And so I, I love that you mentioned the apparel, obviously you see our, my wrap trucks, right? Like it, dude, not having a wrap vehicle is the dumbest thing. It's dude, like you got to drive anyways. Like it sits in my parking lot. Cool. Well, people sit at parking lot over and over and they see me at fries. They see me at church. They see me at Gilbert high. They see me at an event. They see me at this place or that place, right? They, you can just drive. I saw you on the 202. I saw you on the 60. I saw you on the 101. But like, if you, it's not wrapped, just look in the parking lot right now. Yeah. Walk it. When you walk outside, what do those guys do? I don't know. You have no idea. It, it, I don't even have the opportunity to start a conversation unless it's a badass vehicle. Right. Right? Like a Lambo or some, some, something yeah. exotic. Like that Tesla truck or something. Yeah. And, but like, and then that will start a conversation. But like, that's just, the, I mean, but the opportunity is so small, right? But you could take an average vehicle that's 
five or 10 years old and it was a hundred thousand miles on it or whatever. But if it's wrapped, Hey, it's, what do you do? Hey, what dude? Even if you don't go a full wrap, I mean, I personally believe in full wraps, but you know, you did the back window or, yeah. or don't do a magnet. I think it's ghetto and, and, and garbage, but a half wrap, a quarter wrap, something on there because it's a conversation because when you're getting gas at QT and they see that they're like, Oh dude, you're a trainer. Oh dude, you do roofing. Oh dude, you do this or you do that. And all, all it is is a conversation starter. And then, and exposure, right? For brand mm. recognition. We all know what Nike and the swoosh is. Why? Cause we've seen the swoosh not millions. a couple of times, not a couple hundred times, not a couple thousand times, literally in the millions of times, whether it's, whether it's physically on people's shoes or a, or a shirt or a hat or Tiger Woods playing golf or you you name right. it. We see it over and over and over and over again. And I think as small business owners, we underestimate how hard we have to push that brand recognition to get out of that obscurity, to get that omnipresence. Right. Right. And so that's why I, 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 I there was a time um, after or, or marketing girl wore a Carhartt uh, hat. Yep. It was Carhartt area hat, boots, you know, whatever. We're wearing a hat while on the job, while working. And I was like, I think it was Aria. I said, does Aria cut your check? And she's like, no. I said, cool, don't ever wear that again. And so it's like a joke now, right? Right. But it's like, well, why? Because I only want people representing the brands. People are so like, I got, uh, you know, Lululemon over their chest. I'm like, dude, Lululemon doesn't cut you a check. You nice. give them $1,000 a year for their clothes. I love their clothing, by the way. Probably oh, yeah. the it's super best, nice. fitness, best fitness clothing I've ever worn in my life. Um, but the principle of it was they still don't cut me a check. They just don't. So who cuts me either? So my, my, just so you guys know, my mindset that's helped me big time, right? Lions, not sheep. I have hundreds of shirts and hats of Sean Whalen. He's literally right here in his little, little murals right next to me. Right. right? But Sean doesn't cut me a check. Now I love the brand. So I'll wear that with something of mine. Right. Because the lion's not sheep might be a conversation starter that will tie me into what I do. Right. But some people will wear, I only wear this. I only wear that. And I'm like, but what do you do? Because if you talk about lion's not sheep, that's not going to help me become a better husband or a better dad or, 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 or a business owner. But if they see my brand and what I do, that will allow my business to grow. Yeah. It's almost like people are afraid to, represent their brand where they're out and about. It's like, are you, are you not wearing it out and about because you're, you're 1000%. Yeah. They believe more yeah. in, in, in the Nikes or the a a l o aloe or the hell that new one yeah. is coming out. Right. Or, or your Brooks, or your ons, or they're so much more willing or the GMC or the Ford. I'm like, dude, you got, you have this badass hundred thousand dollar truck and it has GMC over everything. And GMC has never cut you a check Thanks. ever. And they never will. And they never will. And they don't give two shits about you either. No offense. They just don't. Yeah. But if I were to put a logo on there or a wrap on there, it's still a hundred thousand dollar truck. It's still a GMC. And people say, dude, that's a badass truck. But I get way more. That's a badass wrap or that's a badass truck with a wrap on it instead of just the truck by itself. Right. Because I'm driving that hundred thousand dollar truck down the road. Guess what? How much exposure does it give me? Nothing other than that's a cool truck. Right. Right. Um, so it's interesting the, 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 this whole thing, how it comes about. So that being said, shifting into, into the health and fitness space, small business owners, entrepreneurs. Okay. Right. Um, most, most of them it's, so I was at a, it's called the ARCA Arizona roofing contractor association, uh, golf tournament this past Friday. Right. I didn't work out that morning cause I had to be there like seven. Oh, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, you went out there and smoked and that's all I that mattered. I still did. I still did two workouts, but the. I'm there. Average dude is 50 to hundred pounds overweight. It doesn't matter if they're 35 or 55 or 85, 50 to hundred pounds overweight. Most of us have beards. Right. And that was like the stereotype. I mean, you have dudes just like flopping over their, their golf carts right. because it's a stereotype that is accepted that you can still run a business and make a shit ton of money, but be fat and out of shape. I hate that. It drives me nuts because your wife tolerates it. That's a, that's a hard, hard truth. Yeah. Hard pill to swallow. Yeah. It's like, Oh dad, the dad bot. I'm like, dude, the dad bot is not a thing. That is literally you programming your spouse or yourself. That it's okay to be fat and out of shape, but your kids should not like, that's the example you're setting for your kids. Just like your bank account. If there's nothing in your bank account, you're setting a bad example for your kids. You just are pick, right. pick anything. Are you beating your wife and talking shit about your wife and yelling at your wife? Or are you rubbing her feet? Are you bringing her flowers? Are you taking her on date nights? Are you talking to her like she's 
the number one most important thing to you on planet Earth. Absolutely. So what are you doing like that with your body, right? Please, I, I, I bleed this all the time and, and try and push it down the throats of those that listen to my podcast or on social media or at our events. How important is it to make sure that you are in tip top shape? Because we call it putting, uh, putting fuel into the Ferrari, right? What kind of fuel yeah. are you putting into the Ferrari? Will you please just tell them that it's okay that you can be chiseled and ripped and still be a business owner? Oh, absolutely. I mean, think about I feel like this. The, I feel like it's the number one. Sorry, I feel like it's the number one thing that people give up when they start a business. Absolutely, I did. Yeah, I mean, everybody because everybody goes, okay, well, you know what? Here, I got to sacrifice. I got to sacrifice. I got to sacrifice. Right, and then they go right to sacrificing their body. Well, here's the thing I tell people: let's just say you're not good at marketing. You're you're not a good manager, but you've got a decent product. Well, here's the thing. If you stay in shape, you're going to outlive your competition. Whew. So they can get out on the gate, do better than you the first three, five, seven, ten years. Let's see what happens at year 15 to 20. Because now all of a sudden, they're a high candidate for type 2 diabetes, stroke, heart attacks. They're in and out of the hospital. Somebody else who doesn't even know what the business is is trying to run the business. And now... Injuries. Yep. Now, all of a sudden, unfortunately, that business is about to fold. It has to sell. Who's ready to buy it? Or just close. Yeah. So it's either it closes or somebody comes on and buys it pennies on the dollar. Oof. So it's important for you to be just that physically fit because if you're physically fit, you can outlast everything. You can handle the stress that comes with owning your business. Anybody who wants to own their business, you're not getting out of the stress. You're not. No. But there's a way to handle that stress, and being fit is a great way to be able to handle that stress. And then, not only that, makes you a better spouse, better parent, 100 times better parent, better friend, makes you, and it gives you the ability to be able to actually do something with the community, right? To me, it's, you can be physically fit. You should be able to, at any point, like, for example, this just happened um, last Friday. I was with my 13-year-old, and we were talking and I said, hey, you know what? All right. Tell you what. I'll challenge you to the 400-meter dash. I haven't done the 400-meter dash in, it had been eight years. Eight years. And she's she's fast. For 13, she's booking it. Right now, she's running about a minute and six seconds, one lap around the Ooh. track. And so she felt pretty confident, and she should. She's been practicing. She's been training, all that stuff. I said, hey, I understand I haven't been doing stuff on the track, but your dad's fit. I'm not that guy that just rolls out of bed at 46 and can't do anything I want to do physically. We went out there. Unfortunately, she got the L. Mm. But here's the great thing about it. In the process of her getting that L, I helped my daughter PR by two seconds. And I was so proud of her for taking something on and not backing down and going hit me in that. But only that, it not only did that, it allowed her to be like, you know what? Here's the example. My dad owns his own business. He's present in my life. He's great to my mom, great to my siblings. He's fit enough to come out here and run a 400-meter dash. I don't know many. And many, not die. Yeah, and not die. And be sitting there, you know. So at the end of the day, right, it's you need to be fit. If you want to accomplish anything in this world, you need to be fit. You cannot choose to be unfit. COVID showed us what happened when, when you're unfit. You die. Dude, that you and say that. that and you I know say that's that. harsh. No, no, dude. But that's I, what happened. I, um, well, that's a funny. That, I don't, that no, It's not funny. The interesting comment about that with COVID and the relationship with that is, yes, many, many people passed away. We're not trying to be insensitive to that at all. Right. right. It's true. However, if you were heavier, out of shape, in bad shape, overweight, you had a way, way, way higher chance of passing away because your body is less able to fight the virus yes. than to somebody else that is in great shape. Now we know people that were in great shape that still passed away, right? The virus can do whatever it wants, but you being in shape gave you a better chance to win. Yes. Gives you a better chance to win in business, to win in your marriage. I love Andy Yellett. People hate him. I, I, I don't agree with everything he says. Probably 90% I do 10% no. Right. But something he says like, dude, take your shirt off. Right. And like, go stand in front of the mirror. Are you happy with yourself? Like it, it literally like go sell something with your shirt off. Right. And like the confidence there is like we hide, we hide underneath our clothes. That's why I love Arizona because it's very hard to hide 
because we don't have any clothes <laughs> on in Arizona because it's so freaking hot. But like everybody else, like in New York where it's like freaking freezing Michigan where it's, you know, freezing, you know, eight months out of the year, they're always bundled up. I'm like, dude, no, what? like it, it's, yeah. it's great, right? You can, you can hide a lot of shit. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. So last thing I ask you before, before I let you go, um, my question for you is, well, one, how can they get a hold of you? Okay. How can they, where, where can they find you? What's the best way to get a hold of you? Honestly, the best way to get a hold of us, literally just jump on the website or the Instagram and just see T- TI fitness, TI fitness. So on Instagram, we are TI fitness AZ. Okay. I don't know. You know I mean? The person who uh, did a TI fitness on Instagram before me, they're <laughs> not doing anything. They just need to drop off, but it is what yeah. it is. Right. And then, or you jump on the website, which is TI fitness.com. And honestly, I mean, I'll even throw my number out there. It's just, it's right there on the website. It's 480-813-5624. Shoot me a text. You'll get back. You're, you're literally going to end up talking to me. Sure. Love it. Love it. Love it. So Ter- Terrence in the house. Now, like I said, my last question is what advice would you give a small business owner, uh, a, a mom or a dad, a husband or a wife trying to grow and scale their business, right? Trying to take their, I always say, try to take their business, their family and their income to the next level. What advice would you give them coming from the health and fitness space and knowing how important it is in order to thrive in the, all those categories while you're still growing and scaling and not neglect it? What advice would you give them? The biggest advice I would give somebody is you've got to set aside at least one hour a day. You've got to set aside that time for your health. You've got to do that. You've got to set aside that time. Once you set aside that time, then you can start getting to a point now where you start realizing your management of time is huge. Mm-hmm. So that'd be the biggest advice I would tell somebody is, hey, you're trying to grow your business. Make sure you're setting aside time. Once you learn how to set aside time for the things that matter, which is your health, your family, your spouse, mm-hmm. dude, mm-hmm. you'll blow up. You will blow up. It's Promise funny, it's funny how it works. They're like, well, if I work out and I make more money, I'm like, bro, it's like you, yeah. you have a way better chance too, though. Right? You really do. Because if, and I think it's a distraction. Like when you're, when you're physically in shape and you don't have the big gut and you're not out of weight and you're uh, not, you know, not heavy breathing and you're like, uh, the other part too is their level of res- natural respect, right? First impression. Thanks. So like you walk in the room, you're like, okay, that dude has my respect. That dude's ripped. Why? Because that dude has discipline. He puts in, you might be, you might have a broke bank account, but at least you have that kind of, that's why I'm like, uh, I forgot who said it. They literally go. They go, uh, not, they're not in the fitness space. I forgot who said it, but they literally will go to gyms to recruit people. Why? Uh, cause dudes that are ripped in the gym, they're disciplined. They're literally going to the gym. Absolutely. Oh, it's like, so if I can take that mindset of the discipline of you working out and getting fit and turn that into work stuff, like win, win. Yeah, right. 100%. But, and it's, I feel <laughs> it's way easier to grab people there than someone that's not the exact opposite. And then be like, Oh yeah, but they make a ton of money, but it's like, yeah, but you don't value you're holding your fitness and that goes against like my core values, right? right? Which is becoming the best version of yourself and reaching your true potential. Like you're settling and I hate settling. I hate average. I hate mediocrity. Um, I hate cruise control. I hate average. Like it drives me nuts. Yeah. It's, it's the thing that kills people. It's when they start getting comfortable and they go, okay, it's like, dude, you've lost. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So my man, my man, Terrence, my personal trainer, um, I, like I said, I, I wanted to, and I already told him I, I pushed 350% of my weight doing the, the sled push. Absolutely. Yeah. Crushed it. So Still I told, I told him more. I want to do, I told him I want to do a thousand pounds and he's like, we might need to get you different shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, the shoes are definitely going to be it's huge brutal. Key component on that one. But, uh, and I told him, I was like, uh, I found out that, so you know, you know who Gary Brecka is. Yes. Yeah. So Gary, so Gary's been on my podcast. He's been on my stage. Super cool dude. Okay. And uh, he talked, he mentioned two things. One, he said the average person, he said it's like less than 0.001% of all of humanity on planet earth can bench over 225 pounds. Facts. Facts. That was number one. Number two, uh, the average, uh, or he said, I think it was 95% of both male and females will never sprint after the age of 30. Facts will never sprint. Like they won't like their, your, you know, hundred meter, 400 meter dash. Like you, they will never like take that kind of a jump physically ever again after they turn 30 years old. 95%. That's insane. Yeah. They won't even do it. And there's more things out there now, Jay, that'll allow for that laziness. 
Oh, because we tolerate it. I love the word tolerance. Like we tolerate it. Like your wife tolerates you not being in shape, or right? And and uh, and this is and I'll probably get shit for this comment, but like moms, when you're done having babies, like get your ass back in the gym, get get to that hot bod that yeah, that your you know your husband married. You had kiddos, awesome. You sacrificed your life and your body. We love it. We appreciate it. But hey, let's let's get back on track. Right. Yeah. Because here's the thing. And, and, and I'm glad you they use it as a cop out. Yeah. And, I, and I'm glad you brought that up because, yeah, I, I, there is a part where, yeah, from a chemical standpoint, yeah, there's been some changes. But that doesn't mean you still can't get after it. Right. It still doesn't give you a pass. Progress. For not. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, now you're what are you doing? You're just showing this example to your kids. Right. Well, and the craziest part is like with guys, like women at least have have a, an out for like a better words or for for a time. You freaking you brought a baby in this world. That's no that's no that's no joke, right? No, no, that's, that's hella thing. hard. Right. Could have died. But like, dudes, what do we have? What's our excuse? Nothing. We don't have any freaking excuses. None. Zero. That's what I love about it. It's like, dude, if you're especially if you're a male, you have zero freaking excuse of why you should not be at least making progress to get into the best shape of your life right. and maintain it. Women, like I said, having kiddos and the whole pregnancy and post and all that stuff. Like I said, my wife. We have five kids. She's, you know, all natural births. Like it's a, it's a, it's a journey, but she really, Heidi found out. She's like, Hey, I'm not going to kick this by myself. I need to get into a gym and, and actually make it this a priority. And guess what? She's happier. She's healthier. She's sexier. She, she feels sexier. Right. Apart from me, me looking at her is like, oh, you're sexy no matter what. Right. But she sees that like right. her, her mental health is stronger. Right. She's been more mentally sound now than she was through all those other things because she found the importance of, of that, just that mental win, apart from the physical win, that mental win of going to the gym, yes. working on yourself. Cause as a mom, you neglect yourself a lot of times through that whole birthing period. Right. And so it's, it's good to make yourself a priority again and, get, and give back to yourself. They have to. Yeah. It is the number one thing. And that, that, and that's on the husband. He's got to be a part of, Hey, go ahead and prioritize yourself. Yep. You go do you. It will be the example too. Yeah. Oh, facts. It's like, yeah, babe, go to the gym and you're sitting over there freaking, you know, eating, you know, potato chips and, you know, 50, hundred pounds overweight sitting in your big old, you know, uh, lazy boy chair. Right. Right. So I'm, I'm very, very passionate about this. You guys know that. Um, Terrence, thanks for being on here, dude. Appreciate oh, you, man. Thanks for having me, bro. So awesome. I just want to bring Terrence. I was like, dude, I got to get you on the podcast. Like I, the, people that make, you have the opportunity to make such an impact on people's lives because when people have a physical transformation, like shit gets real yeah. and, and every part of their life starts to change once they start making that a priority. It's super cool. So appreciate you, dog. Um, like I said, it'll go to tifitness.com, uh, tifitnessaz on Instagram. You can hit me up as well too. Like I said, I'm there three to five days a week. Um, and uh, yeah, like everything you want to do in life, make sure that your health and your fitness are a priority one hour a day, every single freaking day. Let's go. This is Jason Payne, your host of the Sexy Business Status Podcast. Good. Thanks for having me, bro.